Hi guys, Rian here. Today I will be covering a guide on Animal Traveller. There are two builds or roles the Animal Traveller can be played as. The first and most common build will be the Viridescent Support. Basically, a Viridescent Support build sole purpose is to debuff the enemy's resistance for your main DPS to deal more damage. The requirements for this build is also very minimal and all you need is just 4-piece Viridescent set for it to work. The damage output of Viridescent support is not that important unless you plan to build a sub-DPS Viridescent support. More on that later. Although a pure Viridescent support Animal Traveler requires very little investment to make it work, there are often better candidates for this role. Characters like Sucrose and Venti perform as a much better Viridescent support. The only reason why you would use a Viridescent support Traveler is because you are completely free to play and do not have Sucrose or Venti. This brings me to Animal Traveler's second role, as a sub-DPS. A sub-DPS Animal Traveler will require proper weapons, artifacts and talents to perform optimally. For this video, I will be showcasing Animal Traveler as a sub-DPS and not just for a Viridescent debuff. Let's talk about the talents. Animal Traveler's elemental skill, Palm Vortex has two modes. The first mode can be activated by just tapping it and it will perform an Animal AoE Blast. The second mode can be done by holding down the skill button, and the traveler will suck in everybody nearby before releasing the blast. Both of these modes are nice to have, but as a sub DPS, I tend to use the whole mode more because it does more damage and has a longer cooldown. In between the cooldown, I'm able to switch to my main DPS to do damage. The traveler's burst, Gust Surge, creates a tornado that travels in a straight line. This tornado is able to pick up smaller units like Helichos, Slimes and Treasure Hunters to constantly deal damage in the tornado. Always remember to infuse your tornado with an element as much as possible to deal more damage. There are a couple of tips and tricks you can perform with Gust Surge also. The one most people know is the Goba Nado. This is when you pair Xiangling with Traveller and put down Goba before using Gust Surge. Goba will be picked up with the tornado and infuse the Goba Nado with Pyro. Smaller units like Helichos and Treasure Hunters will be dead by the time Goba Nado ends, but sometimes enemies like Fatui Agents and Sisin Majors may survive. This is when I switch to characters like Sing Chiu or Chao to vaporize the survivors. The second technique you can perform with Traveler's Burst is the Stationary Tornado, or what I like to call the Stationado. Gas Surge will be stuck in place when it runs into a Geo Construct. Since you cannot use Geo Traveler when playing Animo Traveler, the other characters who can make a Geo Construct are Zhongli and Ningguang. This is the opposite to Goba Nado that targets smaller mobs and picks them up. The Station Nado is meant for larger mobs like Ruin Guards or even World Bosses. What I usually do is put down the construct next to the target and cast Gas Search on it. Since the burst is an AoE, it will hit everyone around the pillar. This is my side to side comparison in boss fight with and without using the Station Nado technique. Animo Traveler's burst is significantly weaker when it does not constantly deal damage throughout the duration. Here is my showcase of killing world bosses with the Station Nado trick. Klee is actually a very good pair with Animal Traveler as Palm Vortex and Gas Search is able to pull in Klee's Jumpty Dumpty.
Next will be the Traveler's Constellation. I will briefly touch on this because there isn't much to add and everyone has all the constellations from the story anyway. Constellation 1 allows her palm vortex to pull a larger radius when holding down the skill. This is pretty useful for crowd control and also pulling in her cleats jumpy dumpty. Constellation 2 is just more energy recharge and Constellation 4 reduces damage taken when channeling palm vortex. But I have never noticed this in action too much. Constellation 6 is the only valuable constellation as it allows Traveler to reduce Animo and the infused element's resistance by 20% when hit by Gas Surge. This effect can be stacked on top of Viridescent and is what makes Animo Traveler a good support. Next will be Animo Traveler's weapon option. Your weapon choice may be different if you are playing a sub DPS role or Viridescent support role. For a pure Viridescent support build, Weapons that give energy recharge are best to allow Traveller to spam Gust Surge more. Your DPS is not important as all you want to do is keep reducing the enemy's elemental resistance. The best in slot for this build will be Sacrificial Sword. Sacrificial Sword not only provides you with elemental recharge, but also allows Traveller to double cast Palm Vortex. This even applies to the channeling version. Double fully charged Palm Vortex is the fastest way to generate energy. Other good options will be Skyward Blade, Favonia Sword and Festering Desire. Since Festering Desire is a free-to-play weapon, anyone will be able to make use of full support traveller with little to no investment. As for the sub-DPS build, Primordial Jade Cutter will be the best in slot for any more traveller. Primordial Jade Cutter has by far the highest DPS with its high base attack, high crit rate and passive that does not have any requirements to be active. Other good options will be Summit Shaper and Aquila Favonia for their high base attack and bonus attack stats. The reason why I rank Summit Shaper lower than the Jade Cutter is because getting full stacks on the Summit Shaper is actually quite unrealistic for a sub DPS. Typically, you will only want to swap in to use your skills, then swap back to your main DPS. But if you do not have any of the 5 star weapons, Harbinger of Dawn, Black Sword, and Festering Desire are also good options. Harbinger of Dawn has a higher DPS when it comes to skills and burst than any 4-star weapon, but you will need to keep your HP above 90%. Technically, Blackleaf Longsword has a higher damage output. However, getting stacks on this weapon is really difficult for a sub-DPS, and is why I did not include it in the list. Without its stacks, the DPS will be significantly lower. As for Animal Traveler's artifacts, there are a few options depending on your build also. In general, Viridescent 4-piece will be Traveler's best in slot as it is good for a full support build and also a sub DPS build. The Elemental Resistance Reduction of 40% allows your main DPS to deal even more damage than Noblesse 4-piece set. As for alternative options for sub DPS Traveler, 2-piece Viridescent and 2-piece Gladiator would give the highest damage output. I would recommend Viridescent Gladiators over Viridescent Noblesse because Animo Traveler's burst sometimes is a hit or miss. But I am not ruling the Viridescent Noblesse as a bad option. The only time Viridescent Noblesse is better is when you properly execute Station Nado. If every hit of Traveler's Burst actually hits your target, the damage of Traveler is actually very significant. The last set I would like to touch on is the Lava Walker set. This set theoretically has the highest damage output, but does not work on various enemies like the Abyss Mages and Slimes. Since Klee and Xiangling are very good team members with Animo Traveler, Using the Lava Walker set actually allows Traveller to perform as a very strong sub DPS. But since this set is very situational, I would consider this as a main build instead of a meta build and wouldn't really recommend people to use it for real. The last topic of Traveller will be his teammates. Animo Traveller is able to work with any team except for Geo main DPS. Since Viridescent debuff is able to reduce the resistance of any other element except Geo and Animo itself, Traveller is able to be a strong support for any Pyro, Hydro, Cryo and Electro teams. My personal favourite is pairing Traveller with Klee to suck in the landmines from Jumpty Dumpty. It does not matter if Klee is in a Melt team with Ganyu or Vaporize team with Seng Chiu. The Animo Traveller is still able to benefit the team in many ways. Even if you run a double pyro with no reactions, Viridescent is still able to boost your pyro DPS damage. Another team that I like to do is Guobanedo Vaporize team with Chao, Xiangling and Traveller. 
Since Chao is a character that has long cooldowns on his dagger form, Traveller and Xiangling both act as a very strong sub-DPS for Chao. In this team, I also like to use Barbara to apply Hydro status for Traveller to swirl off from. Animo supports are one of the most flexible characters in the game, and you can mix them into any team. Since Swirl does not mess up your elemental reactions and instead boosts them, you can get very creative with Traveller on your team. This about covers everything you need to know about Animo Traveller. I hope you all find this guide helpful. Like and subscribe to see more Genshin content. I have also done many in-depth guides of characters like this. You can find them down in the description.